Hello and welcome to another Warhammer replay. This is Otter here and today we're going to be talking about what to say to your dentist when you haven't flossed your teeth. Look at this avatar of Cain. Oh my god. Ridiculous. So in this matchup we've got a 2v2 battle. Uh, I'm going to be playing the Dark Elves and then there's another player uh, by the name of Anubis XI who's playing the Chaos. And then on the far side, we have the good guys, Bretonia and High Elves, um, who are going to be played by Yella Ducky and UM, USMCNOLAN, respectively. So with that said, let's get this game on the road and uh, see what happens. So this is being played at Shimmer Sword. I forgot to mention that. So it's a very beautiful map. Got a nice little rainbow in the background. Cool stuff. So there is a vanguarded unit of mounted yeomen here, but otherwise pretty straightforward army setups. We do have uh, two units of dragon ogres anchoring the back line for the chaos warriors, and then two units of marauder th horsemen with throwing axes to support the chaos sorcerer lord of death, which I think is always important. If, if you're going to take a, a chaos lord on a dragon, you need to be able to give it some uh, anti-air support, especially if you're going up against High Elves and Bretonia. So those two units will help a little bit, but I still think it was pretty ballsy to go with the Chaos uh, Sorcerer on the Dragon versus Bretonia and High Elves, but c'est la vie. So I've taken a little bit more of a defensive uh, stand here, which is a little bit different from my typical play. I've got uh, Repeater Bolt Thrower, just one, to basically poke uh, any knights and try and bait Bretonia over to me. I knew that the Repeater Bolt Thrower would uh, trade well with the Blessed Field Trebuchet and probably do uh, you know very well against the knights if I could get my hands on them. So yeah, initial volleys. I'm just going into the Battle Pilgrims. The Battle Pilgrims do have shields, but they also have uh, pretty light armor and, and pretty high damage output. So I want to get those off the field while I was waiting for the knights to come into range. I will eventually switch over here. So Anubis XI is going head on into Umskanolon, whatever. The front lines are just starting to meet here. Phoenix Guard uh, are anchoring the front line and, you know, they're best against large, but they'll do okay against pretty much everything. They're just an amazing unit over, overall, as long as they're fighting something and not being cutted. Um, so... They're going to make short work of these Chaos Marauders. The Chaos Warriors will also struggle, I think, against the Phoenix Guard because of the armor pen of the Phoenix Guard. So overall, I think some favorable engagements here from the High Elves players. Bretonia has decided to send some archers over here to shoot into the Chaos Warriors. The Chaos Warriors do have heavy armor and shields, so it's not going to do a ton of damage, especially while they're engaged in melee. But it is kind of making it hard on my ally here. Uh, so... I was starting to feel a little bit guilty, uh, like I need to be more active here in helping out my ally um, because the damage output of this one repeater bolt thrower is probably going to not be enough to equate to the damage output of the Blessed Field Trebuchet plus these two archer units uh, with all the other units in Actus. So I was like, okay, I got to figure out something to do here. Meanwhile, uh, the High Elf Prince has come into the front line and he's basically started to route off these uh, units that were wavering. Like dragons are great for basically finding units with low morale and just getting them to run away. Uh, and the Lothar and Seaguard are starting to take pot shots in here at the Chaos Sorcerer. So tough news for Anubis because uh, the Chaos Lord is taking a lot of damage. The Archer units are all online right now. The Dragon Ogres are fighting some Lothar and Seaguard, but the Seaguard have anti-large. So, I mean, it's not the worst matchup for the High Elf player. If I were the High Elf player, I would pull the Phoenix Guard back and see if I can get them in there on the Dragon Ogres. But, uh, yeah, uh, still, with two units of Dragon Ogres, even though they are anti-large, they're, they're very close to buckling. So we'll see if that actually happens. The Prince has the Blade of Bell... Uh, Cordoris and uh, Deadly Onslaught. So he's hunting the Chaos Sorcerer when he can, but it looks like those Dragon Ogres are able to sort of pin him down and do some work there. So Balance Bar is in our opponent's favor. A Chaos Army is basically routed, and I've been a total jerk by not helping him out. But the Bretonians still had like a lot of high value units over here, uh, a whole bunch of knights. So I didn't want to commit too much until I knew what he was doing with those knights. So just being a little bit patient here right now uh, and hoping that the Chaos player can just hold on for a little bit until I can find a seam. And finally, I get that chance. 
So Cold One Knights, I, I find some battle programs here. Battle programs are a high damage unit, but they have very light armor and very low armor pen. So that's a perfect uh, sort of fight for the Cold One Knights to get into because I know they can do a lot of damage without taking very much in return. And I popped uh, Wise Fan's Wisdom onto the Cold One Knights to buff their armor up even higher. So 120 armor uh, with the extra weapon damage. These guys are going to do a ton of damage on the battle programs. And that's about like a, I don't know, six to eight hundred dollar units more or less that's going to be wiped off the field and i'll take almost no damage in return very happy about that the blessed field trebuchet is going to shoot in on the cold one knights a little bit here but uh nothing i mean i'm going to do a lot more damage on the battle programs than i take in return so now the bretonian player getting a little bit more active now that the uh the, the chaos has been more or less dealt with. Uh, there's been two attacks here. Knights of the Realm trying to find a seam into the bolt thrower. And then some Knights Errant uh, basically peeling around the side with Leon Kerr. But they're going to have a hard time finding a seam here with some Black Guard and some Cold One Knights. And Witch Elves basically anchoring that back line. I did decide to send the Cold One Knights into the Foot Squires. I backed them up with the Death Hag who casts Fury of Cain. So they're, they're rocking a pretty hefty 66 melee attack. And I figured they'd be able to get through these... Um, foot squires with the terror of the uh death hag uh so you know i unlike the battle pilgrims foot squires do have armor pen so they could dish out a bit of damage in return to the cold one knight but uh, i still figured if you know i might as well go in and uh, go for the gold here uh and yeah so i did a lot of damage but eventually i did pull out because i wanted to get my charge bonus back so the uh, Prince and the uh, Chaos Sorcerer are still playing tag here. Chaos Sorcerer is just spamming Spirit Leech on the Prince every chance he can get. And it's starting to add up. Like the Prince is now down to about one third health. Chaos Sorcerer is still about the same, but it does have a little bit of support from these Marauder Horsemen who are now... Oh, they're about to take a charge from the Chaos, uh, from the Prince, and yeah, just get plastered there. But they're basically out of ammo anyways at this point, so not a huge loss there if he does lose them. The Grail Guardians, uh, they are, you know, they were trying to go after my Cold One Knights, but they're going to start taking a lot of damage because I was able to pin them with the Witch Elves, prevent them from cycle charging, and now I'm sending over the uh, Spears and a second unit of Cold One Knights to basically punish them. And this sort of flank attack that, uh, that uh, the Bretonians had tried to use was unsuccessful, so now I had no fear to free up my resources and start working them over here. I do cast the Gaze of Cain uh, with uh, Crone Hellebron to basically shore up this pocket. And they're going to, you know, essentially wipe out the last bit of Grail Guardians. But uh, Balance Bar is still in our opponent's favor because, uh, you know, the Chaos Army is essentially all but dead. The only thing that's really left here is this Chaos Sorcerer who's going to keep trying to Spirit Leech down this Prince every opportunity he can get. Our biggest threats right now, I think, are these Phoenix Guard. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. The Lothurn Sea Guard are pretty low on ammo now. Uh, and the Breasted Field Trebuchet also getting fairly low on ammo. So not too, too concerned about that at this point. Probably it's okay if the Blessed Field Trebuchet just, you know, uses the rest of its ammo. And I don't need to, you know, desperately push towards that. So I'm going to try start to send the Bleak Swords over towards the High Elves to kind of interrupt uh, some of this uh, archer play. There's the Bretonian archers, plus still the couple units of Sea Guard, so I just want them to basically screen that out. Meanwhile, with my heavy forces, the um, B Black Guard of Nagrand, I want to push them in the direction of the uh, Trebuchet so that I can basically anchor that position and then if I need to send in Cav, if I need to send in the Death Hag, if I need to send in Hellebron, then I can do so. So here's where things start to get a little wild. So the Prince comes after the Chaos Sorcerer, but uh, Hellebron uh, has an opportunity here to come in and basically do some damage to the Prince. So whenever she gets a chance to assassinate a high value target like that, she's going in balls deep to do it. And then the Death Hag comes over here to pin it also with the high mass. So now you've got a very, very nice situation uh, for for us. There is a Soul Blade cast on the Prince too, so he's going to be taking some pretty major damage here between Hellebron, the um, Death Hag, and the Chaos Sorcerer Lord. And if we can take the High Elf leadership off of the field, that's going to really, really help us in shifting the battle, you know, back at least 
to even, you know. So there goes the high elf lord. That was very nice for us. Uh, Death Hag is uh, I, I sorry. I took a Sorceress of Beasts, which is something I've been experimenting with lately. Um, let's see what a, what the loadout is. I brought on her. So I've got uh, the impenetrable pelt, which I think combos very nicely with the Death Hag and with uh, Hellebron and also the uh, Y Sense wisdom which gives some additional armor so yeah hellebron is pretty squishy so uh you know i sometimes i like to go like pure damage and i go lore of shadows and occam's mind razor and she just does a filthy amount of damage but other times i think it's okay to give her a little bit of armor and physical resist because she already has really high damage so sometimes you just need her to live for a little bit so she has time to do her work um, so the Witch Elves have managed to get a nice pin in here on some Knights with Leon Kerr. Blackguard plus Cold One Knights are going to trade upwards in this fight against the Knights Errant. Uh, and Leon Kerr is eventually going to, I guess, decide to get out of here. Not sure how many, how much Winds of Magic left are left on this uh, Chaos Lord, but uh, he's... <laughs> he's just looking for an opportunity here. Meanwhile, I've decided to peel Crone Hellebron out of the... Uh, grasp of these Lothar and Seaguard because she was taking uh, uh, quite a bit of missile fire here from the peasant bowmen as well and uh, meanwhile the death hag on the cauldron is out for blood she's just chasing down all of these routing units with the leadership off the field the terror of the death hag is a real asset because anything that's kind of low in leadership she's going to be able to just break them off and she doesn't have to sit in the spears for a large time the only thing i have to worry about is these this unit of keepers of the flame but the death hag is faster than the um keepers of the flame so it can essentially just kite them all over the map Meanwhile, the Black Guard have gotten up to the Blessed Field Trebuchet, and so have the Cold One Knights. So that's uh, going to be a nice pickup for us. And the Witch Elves have caught um, a unit of Peasant Bowmen. So these Peasant Bowmen still have quite a bit of ammo left, but uh, they're not going to be able to kite the Witch Elves, who are much, much faster. Perhaps these Knights Errant could have gone over here and tried to uh, erase those Witch Elves if you have the Peasant Bowmen, but they've decided, I guess, to... I don't know, maybe go after these Dread Spears. I I'm not sure what the uh, what the thinking is there, but different strokes for different folks. Um, so Crone Halibron's just trying to figure out what to do now. I think she probably should have been rotating over here to Luan Kerr, but uh, is that where she's headed? Yeah, she's going to go right over there. So the Chaos uh, Sorcerer Lord is uh, just cycle charging wherever he can. And uh, Cold One Knight's very tattered. Um, pretty much can't fight anything at this point, but they can still chase off routing units, so that's nice. With these units, uh, the High Elf units backed up pretty far away from the fight. I could bring my Death Hag back and start trying to uh, consolidate some gains against Bretonia. Uh, the Cold One Knights are going to go in here and break off the Mounted Yeomen, and they'll have no problems fighting these Battle Pilgrims, Peasant Mob, and I believe more Battle Pilgrims. So that's a great situation for them to be in. The only thing they have to worry about here are these um, Halbreds, but uh, the Black Guard of Agron will trade... You know, fairly evenly with them and I do have a second unit coming over here so I can definitely win this pocket now with uh, with confidence. Crone Hellebron has gotten into uh, Luan Kerr but uh, the Knights Errant were here to support so it's going to be a little bit of a grind fest here. Uh, Luan Kerr, Leon Kerr is uh, pretty tanky. He does have the heart of a lion so you got to respect that um, but I do also have the Sorceress of Beasts who can even in, even the fight a little bit. Uh, so Crone Hellebron, she does have physical resist, right? Um, and if you cast uh, Impenetrable Pelt on her, her physical resist is going up to 48%. So that's, not, that's very substantial. If you don't, that means that if you don't have magical damage, uh, she's going to be essentially mitigating like literally half of the damage that you're putting on her so all of a sudden you know that glass cannon paper lord that paper lord that everyone thinks hellebron is is not so 
papery after all and she just gave the business to leon kerr there uh who was fighting outside of the support of the phoenix guard and these other uh spears so now with leon kerr essentially routing and running off the map we our leadership is intact they still have two units of black guard the cauldron is healthy i've got the mobility advantage with the cold one night so for the first time feeling really good about the situation and the damsel of life is about to break off we have essentially won out on that pocket versus the uh filthy bretonian peasants so just uh, a question of cleaning up the death ball and uh chauffeuring the Leon Kerr off of the map. He does rally here uh, because I, I sort of had to take Halebron like around the uh, Phoenix Guard. Uh, so she's going to eventually catch up with him. I think she's a bit faster, maybe. He's got a speed of 75, Halebron speed of 92. So she's going to track him down no problem. And the Witch Elves are going to start cutting up Sea Guard and uh, Keepers of the Flame. Uh, well... They'll cut up the Sea Guard okay, and maybe not so much the Keepers of the Flame, but there's a, there's going to be a big mosh pit fight here uh, until Hellebron can get back. Rear Charge is going to come in here with the Cold One Knights eventually and just break these Wavering units. And uh, Leon Kerr is, is about to kick the bucket. The Bretonian Peasants do rally. They're going to try and come up here and get in a Rear Charge, but uh, I do have the Sorceress of Bees still who can prop a little bit of magic is that no well when she has the opportunity she can still pop more wise offense wisdom and i do have the death hag who's able to buff uh these black guard of underground so furia kane gets plus 26 melee attack and plus 25 percent weapon damage and the black guard have very high weapon damage so it, there's a lot of synergy between the fury of kane and these black guard and with the high melee attack they're going to be able to get through the the high melee defense of these keepers of the flame and lothran sea guard uh without any problem so they're racking up the kills pretty good this one's up to 144 this one's up to 125 so they've actually outperformed the keepers of the flame at this point and again here comes a gaze of cane so rocking 89 melee attack now on these black guard of Gron. this is why i love Hellebron, you know, if you can keep her alive, she's going to make your front line just so vicious. And they're going to be, you know, mulching the crap out of basically everything now. Balance bar is still pretty tight. I mean, the Keepers of the Flame, uh, that unit is beastly. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to hit the fast forward button now because it's essentially a, a grind out from, from this point on, from my perspective. Just a little bit of cycle charging here from the uh, Death Egg. I mean, the... <laughs> Normally, you don't want to bring her into the Keepers of the Flame, but uh, yeah, Hellebron, she's got a little bit of AoE degen here, which is going to be nice for that nice Mortis Engine effect kicking in on the Keepers of the Flame and just kind of even things out. And the Damsel's gone now. Hellebron basically made short work of her. Another uh, attack here from the Sorceress. She's going to go into the Keepers of the Flame. Another Gaze of Cain, and finally, that's all she wrote. So, yeah, uh, infantry, cavalry, everything performed very, very well for me. Uh, I think maybe it was a little bit unfair on my opponent because I had hesitated too long in helping him out, but I wanted to make sure that uh, I was giving the due uh, respect to the Bretonian uh, cavalry, and I didn't want to stretch myself too thin early on uh, in the sense that I didn't get the value out of my bolt thrower and the cavalry could have isolated my infantry if I pushed up too much. So um very fun match i think uh most of the units um on our opponent's team perform very well i think i've seen this a, a few times the high, high elves will go with like a very heavy line of lothran sea guard with uh basically no mobility so i think um, i mean chaos if i were if i were anubis i mean knowing that the bretonian archers had sh sh switched on to him and that you know he was taking a lot of fire from the, the high elves i would have just backed up like there was no reason really to uh take that engagement because yes the sea guard have you know maybe a range of 150 but i think anubis probably could have kind of at least minimized the amount of damage he was taking with them for a while and then uh sort of baited them into a position where it would have been easier for me to attack the attack the flanks of the high elves but anyway all that said fun game thanks for watching bye